Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. So you're using a messaging platform and you want to process messages in the same order that they were published or sent. While message ordering sounds simple, it usually requires a little bit of a larger discussion on why you think you need ordering and if you really do, how you can accomplish it, or if you can avoid it altogether and not require ordering. I'd like to thank Solace for sponsoring this video. Solace provides a complete event streaming and management platform that makes it easier to design, deploy, and manage event-driven architecture across hybrid, multi-cloud, and IoT environments. For more on Solace, check out the link in the description. So why are some reasons why you think you need to process messages in a specific order? So the first is workflow. So let's say we have order placed, order build, order shipped, and all these events come from different boundaries and you may need something that needs to process them because this is the actual workflow or what you think is the actual workflow. And I'll get to that more in a minute. But the second, and this is the one I probably hear the most about, is usually related to data duplication to other boundaries. And this comes in the form of event carried state transfer. So people often refer to this of saying, okay, well, there's a product created event and a product name updated event. Well, I can't process product name updated to update, say, my local cache when I haven't processed product created because I don't even have it in my local cache yet. So if we need to process messages in order, or we think we do, how do we do that? So if things are simple, this is simple. It's not really that difficult to kind of use a messaging platform that supports first in, first out, FIFO. And that looks like this. So we have our producer. It creates some type of message. This could be a queue or a topic. And maybe we're publishing more than one or sending more than one message. And we have a single consumer. So from there, our consumer picks up the first message. It consumes it, does whatever it needs to do. Once it's completed, then it just simply goes and gets the next message from that queue or topic. And doing this is pretty straightforward. And you can process messages first in, first out. You process a message. You consume it, you do what you need to do, you get the next message. And they're gonna be in the same order, assuming your platform supports first in, first out, FIFO, you're gonna process them in the order that you expect. Now where this falls down a little bit is if you're producing more messages faster than you can consume them. So to alleviate this, what you ultimately end up doing is creating more consumers within that logical boundary to handle all those messages. And this is called the competing consumers pattern, where we're gonna have multiple consumers uh, dealing with those messages in parallel. So what this looks like is we still are producing, say, multiple messages, but now instead of them being one at a time for one consumer, while a consumer is available, if it's not processing a message, it immediately gets the, uh, the next message available. So what that looks like is we could end up processing almost concurrently same message between two different consumers. And the problem here, like I said, is if we were expecting to process one at a time, that means that maybe the second message, which relates to the first, actually gets processed first or concurrently. And if there's some expectation that that first message was actually processed, well, it hasn't been yet. The competing consumers pattern just doesn't apply to queues. It also applies to topics. And most people call this consumer groups, where you have a group of consumers and they are also applying the competing consumers pattern. So what this looks like in the same type of notion here is I have a message going in but it will go to one of each consumer. So that message will be distributed to each consumer group, but only one consumer within that group. So the way to solve this competing consumers problem so you can process messages in order one at a time is what different messaging platforms call different things. Some of them call them, it's by partition, some call it message groups or ordering keys. And to illustrate this, I'm gonna kind of show this as a partition. So when you publish a message, to a particular topic, a topic has multiple different partitions and you can define how many it has. And again, this is depending by a messaging platform you're using. So when you publish a message, you could say, or you could have rules around, okay, this particular key in a message, maybe it's an order ID or a customer ID, I'm gonna send this to this particular partition. In this case, on the topic, I have two partitions. So this message went to the first partition. Then I sent and published another message and maybe it goes to the second partition. Now the thing with competing consumers is that each consumer can be subscribed to multiple partitions, but only one partition can have a single consumer. So in the example of my one-to-one -one ratio here is that I have, say this first partition, the top consumer is the only one consuming that partition. 
so that it's going to consume that message. The second partition is the second consumer, and it's going to par uh, handle that particular message. So if we send another message to that first partition, it will kind of it's kind of sticky in the sense that that first consumer it's the one that handles that partition. There's only one consumer within a group that handles a particular partition, so it will get that message. So that way you can guarantee at least processing that you're going to be processing messages related to a specific either partition or message group or some type of ordering key that gets divided this way that you're kind of processing them one after another given a partition, a, a grouping of messages or some type of uh, ordering key. So what this tries to achieve is really the best of both worlds, which is being able to process messages in a particular order for a group or partition but still having multiple consumers and competing consumers. So for example, if with a case of our product, we could have product created and product up name updated using the same partition or same type of um, ordering key, and they would get processed by the single consumer for it one after another. So we don't have to worry about them getting processed concurrently. While maybe a different uh, product entirely is associated to a different partition or different ordering key, and a different consumer for it will handle it. So at the beginning, I mentioned this is kind of a bigger discussion. And here's another thing that you need to kind of deal with and how you want to deal with it on a use case basis, which is failures. So if you're processing messages in order that relate to each other, like example, that product, what happens when something fails? So let's say that first event that we got to our topic, to our message broker, was the product created event. And then from there, uh, right behind that, let's say the product name changed event was happening. So we're processing these messages in order and our consumer picks up that first um, product created event and something fails. We can't deserialize it. We have a bug in our code in our consumer that needs to handle that. What do we do now? Now this is very situational of what you actually want to do. Maybe you just discard that message, throw it in did letter Q or just ignore it. And maybe you can handle the secondary message, which is the product name updated and you deal with some default value if the product doesn't exist, but it's very situational on what you want to do. Maybe at this point you want to stop everything. It's kind of a, a poison message. We're saying, okay, I'm going to stop this entirely uh, processing these types of message because something's wrong. But again, this is now very situational on how you want to handle failures because you're expecting things to get done and processed in a very specific order. But if you can't process as a message, what do you do? So I mentioned at the beginning kind of workflow business processes where certain events are expecting to happen in a certain order because of some action that you need to handle or how the workflow is in this long running business process. But the reality of it is, is that you actually can, if you get more into the business, realize that things can happen out of order and you just need to handle them accordingly and you can kind of build for that. So here's my example. I have sales and I have this order placed event. So that goes to our topic. And maybe billing picks that up. But from here, billing is going to place an order build event. And from that, what we can have here is we can have this kind of policy that we've defined in our warehouse where it's not only that just the order place happened, but it's also that the order build happened. And from there, once we know that those two events have occurred, then we can go and do something in terms of how we're allocating product, creating our shipping labels and all that stuff. So the thing is, is that the order build event might not kick that off because, well, if we haven't received the order placed, which is kind of out of order here, what do we do? So what we have is our Sauger basically doing this orchestration that's acting kind of as a policy, as a gateway to see, okay, the order build happened, but I haven't received an order placed, so I don't want to do anything yet. Oh, now I get the order placed event. Now I've confirmed I got order build, order placed for the exact same order, whatever identifier that is. Okay, now I can take that. Now I can go to the warehouse. And again, this is kind of living within that logical boundary of the warehouse, kind of as that gatekeeper saying, okay, now everything, I've received everything, regardless of which one came first, I now have both of them. So at this point, we can just create our shipping label, send that command to our warehouse, and we're good to go. So as in a simple example of what that looks like in code, I have this create shipping label saga here that has some data. And this data is what's the state of the saga is the order ID, is the order place, and is the order build. So for each different event, the order place, we just set our state, our data to true for order place. 
When we get our order build message, we set that data is order build to true. And then for each, we call process order. And what process order does, just checks to see if the state for is order place and is order build are both true, then we know that we can actually send our create shipping label command. But at this point, any event can happen out of order. There is no particular order. So do you need to process messages in order? Maybe, but maybe not. At least I would take a look at my example and look at your own workflows to determine, can you actually implement some type of policy to realize that messages and events can come in out of order or you consume them out of order so that you can handle this event occurred, maybe then this event occurred, and now I can continue on with the workflow. If you wanna process messages in order, that means that you need to have a single consumer for a message group. If you wanna have higher throughput and you wanna have many different consumers within a group, that means that you need to rely on your messaging platform to provide some type of functionality like that. Whether it be some type of message group, it has it by partition, so there's a single consumer within a group that handles all the messages on a partition, or some type of ordering key. Again, this is gonna come down to the platform you're using and making sure that you're using a platform that can support this if you need it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.